I remember I'd taken a contract and I decided when I finished that contract, I would go to Spain. I packed my giant suitcase and off I started in Malaga. I was in the shower and I found this lump right here. It was unmistakable. It was the size of a cherry tomato. I immediately called the doctor. So I returned back to the UK. I think it was on the Friday and I was in the doctor's surgery on the Monday. The nurse who was doing the ultrasound saw that it wasn't showing up as a cyst or a fibroid. And it went from an ultrasound to a biopsy. I saw a breast surgeon and he sort of looked at me and said, I'm so sorry, but it's a tumor. It's like everything just went really quiet in the room. And I remember just thinking, my, is this, is this happening? Is this a real moment in time right now where I'm being told that I've, I've got cancer? All the kind of things that I read were not good about triple negative. It's aggressive. It's high risk of recurrence. It affects women from South Asian and black ethnicities more prevalently under 40. So then I learned I'm a walking target. Catherine Hawksford is my oncologist at St. Bart's. She was just brilliant. My life was in pieces. I was broken and I trusted her to help put me back together again. The patience and empathy and compassion that she brought to that first meeting, she saw how terrified it was. She told me that I would get through it and that my saving grace had been that I'd presented early. She had the utmost faith that I would overcome. And that really changed everything for me because I felt like I had someone on my side. In the five months that I was undergoing chemotherapy, I saw two friends on four occasions. COVID was still raging at this point. I was immunocompromised. The loneliness was, it was heartbreaking. Journaling kept me sane. Jenny I met at the young person support group that I went to. We both sort of decided, yep, yeah, I like you, we're gonna be friends. And she's stayed by my side ever since and it, it was an absolute gear shift meeting her. When I was at St. Bart's in those initial few months, I was coming to one place and I knew exactly where to go. I knew who to raise the alarm with. I was getting to know members of the medical team and it made a huge difference. I got to know the breast care nurses. I got to put faces to names. And I built this really sort of stable rapport with the, the wider medical team. That helped enormously. Having all of my cancer care at Bart's led to me having the best possible outcome from a medical point of view, but also psychologically as well. The likelihood is, is that you or someone you know is, is going to experience cancer. And what you really want for that person is the best possible outcome. And that is what this breast cancer center in East London will do. State of the art facilities with compassionate care. It will give people the, the best chance of surviving with all these specialisms under one roof. I finished chemotherapy in May. I got a call from Catherine and I remember I was so nervous because this is, this is literal life or death now. And she said, Nell, it's Catherine. I said, oh, Catherine, tell me. And she goes, it's good news. All the grueling treatment and trauma and taking me right to the edge of life. It had all been worth it. And it was the best day of my life. 20th of July, 2022. Today is a day I found out I'm in the clear, that I don't have cancer in me anymore. No cells, no tumor, no cancer. It hasn't sunk in, but I'm bursting with gratitude and relief. Is this what Cloud9 feels like? Everything feels achievable after this. I overcame cancer, I did this, I get to live.